Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands where you stand and bless His holy name. He deserves all praise. He deserves all honor. He deserves all adoration. Give Him praise. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Bless him because he's planned for our lives. Give him praise. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Can we just ask for the spirit of wisdom tonight? Let's ask for the spirit of wisdom. That God himself will speak to us in a way that no one else can. In a way that only him can. Thank you for that. Now be intentional with your prayer. Don't just make it casual. That you will speak to us, Lord. In a way that only you can. In a way that only you can. You will heal hearts, heal marriages. You will help our journeys. Strength will be administered. That the bones that is broken may rejoice again. That your sons and daughters will be set in the right path as touching marital settlement. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Good evening, church. Good to see you guys. Please be seated. Put your hands together for Jesus. And please, I'd like for you to celebrate yourself as kings and queens that you are. If that's the ovation you think you deserve, I'm amazed. Thank you for standing to celebrate yourself. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. You deserve the ovation. So I'm teaching on understanding male and female uniqueness in marriage. Though we are going to be touching more than that tonight, but that's the fulcrum, that's the basics of what we'll be doing. And it's so important we learn this Particularly because people approach the subject of marriage with a lot of assumptions. Okay? People assume. And these assumptions are proven to be um, grievous ones or costly assumptions. Someone said assumption is the lowest degree or lowest use of man's intelligence. So let's turn our Bibles again, though today we're going to be engaging it much more. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 5. 
Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. From verse 21. Ephesians chapter number 5 from verse 21. If you are there, say amen. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands in how many things? Come on now. Women, hello. In how many things? Uh, ladies, you're getting tired already. How many things? In how many things? All things. Someone say all things. Say all things. <laughs> I love that word, all things. Okay? Verse 25, men read. Come back, come back. Verse 25, men read again. Why are you reading like husband? Love your wife. Read like men. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but I should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies? He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but yet nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Now, this is a very, very important text. Um, to please pay attention. Is that okay? We are going very far tonight. <laughs> we are going what? Yeah. In fact, I've prayed to God. Maybe at some point we need to take a break and cry our eyes out. Then continue. Don't mind the way I start. You are not new. Okay? Follow me. So we're given two instructions to two different individuals. First, men. Oh, yeah. Is it with men? Verse 22 now. Okay. Wives, submit yourselves. Now, that's, that's quite an instruction. Submission will not really have been a tough thing for the woman. What makes it really tough is the fact that she sees what the guy is not seeing. It's difficult to submit when you know that you are seen from an angle is not seen and it might end up in trouble. A woman can tell intuitively the wrong friend who is around the husband. And sometimes keeping quiet looks like, will I watch him to get hot? So submission is not always easy. Okay? But the instruction is that you should what? Submit. So that's, that's what God told the female gender. Not because love is not important to her. 
because love comes naturally to her. She loves effortlessly naturally. What she does not have naturally is submission. Submission is not natural to a woman. It is an instruction. Okay? Are you following me now? Uh -huh. And for the guy, loving, now listen, he didn't say love your spouse or love your girlfriend. He said love your wives. And what that also means is that there is a very strong tendency for the man to be married and not love the wife. It is very possible to see marriage as a necessary project, void of emotions, do it, raise children, and put the love somewhere else. So he gave these separate instructions to the male and female. And we see, listen, and listen very well. When the Bible describes the way Christ loved the church, it was a transformative love. The proof of that love is that it washes the church with the washing of the water and the blood. So how do we know a man that loved the wife? It is the fact that she's been transformed to your presence in her life. She wasn't dressing well because of your presence in her life. Now she's dressing well. Instead of saying, why are you not dressing like so and so and so and so? Jesus has never compared the church with some demons. He sits with the church to achieve what he wants to achieve in the church. He forgives, washes, cleans us, teaches us, empowers us. Exactly what Christ does to the church is what God is instructing the men to do to the wife. So you will be a bad leader if your wife is not being empowered. And the reason why he's giving this instruction is because he's also backing it up with the grace necessary. So the grace to submit to your husband has been released. Because it doesn't come naturally. Anything that does not come naturally to you, you need grace for it. For instance, anointing doesn't come naturally to anyone. You need grace for it. Nobody is born with the gift of miracles. You need to be anointed for it. In the same light, you are to be graced uniquely on how to love your wife on behalf of Christ. Because it's a sacred trust. Like I said, it is stewardship. It is not ownership. It is what? Stewardship. It is what? Stewardship. So it means that our confines of safety is actually the confines of obedience to the instructions of God. It means the man is safe when he loves the wife the way the Bible said to love her. He will not fall into trouble. And the woman is safe when she submits to her husband the way the Bible says to. She will not fall into trouble. So you have to delete the 1,001 reasons you have given yourself not to submit to him. And you have to delete the 1,001 reasons you've given to yourself why you think you cannot love your wife this way. Now, the reason why this teaching is so important is that if you know the number of married couples who take good pictures and good selfies who are actually in the real sense praying that either of them should die so they can be free. Because through disobedience to God's instruction, they have driven the marriage to corners both of them should not have entered. If the devil wants to fight your children, it needs to start from you. Because to fight you, it began from your parents. 
And that's why you must understand that marriage is as spiritual as it is physical. It is not just about the form. <laughs> Destiny is at stake. Assignment is at stake. The mental, the physical, the emotional construct of the children that will be born in that environment is at stake. So he wants you to become a toxic environment so that the fruit, the seeds of God in that home will be corrupted. Ultimately, your own assignment will be destroyed. Are you still with me? Now, because of the many assumptions around the subject of marriage is the reason why we must understand the uniqueness. And the reason why we should understand this uniqueness is that it will help us reduce the conflict. And it will better prepare those who are yet to get in. Is that okay now? Good. So we need to understand sometimes what you are fighting in your spouse is not unique to him. It is unique to the male. And sometimes what you are fighting in the wife is not unique to her. It's unique to women. Why are you always the last person to come out of the house every time we are going to church? I will have to wait. She's not the only one. My wife. <laughs> so, I've just devised a survivor means if we are going out by 6, I will say we are going by 5.30. And that 5.30 is when my wife will just be putting the makeup so eventually by the time it is six we are good the 30 minutes i had there is mental health okay so before we get married when we want to meet up at a place you'll be there now that we are married so you have changed she has not changed that's which has always been in fact i have found cases where people came to report their husband to me and the same thing they are reporting the guy for. I'm doing it. <laughs> I will now look at my wife. How do I counsel this guy? Because <laughs> we are the same. Oh. <laughs> Many times I'm about to tell people that this one that you say when you talk to your husband. He will just reply, wow. Is it that he's not listening? Is it? Ha. Huh. Me, I would if the I would be trying to remember where the conversation started from. That hey, what did she say? What if I can remember one thing in between, I will just join the flow. Unfortunately, many times I can't remember. So my wife will now say things like, So you would be talking to you, you will not even talk. Ha! Huh. How do I tell her that what you have been saying for 20 minutes is just you who is hearing? So where was I? Project. So when women come to report, in case you plan to report your husband, I'm saying I share in that problem. And I'm going to show you how God will help us. Okay? One time a, a woman went to report the husband to Dr. Miles Morrow and said, this man, every time he wants to have sex, he, wants, he has a demon. Dr. Miles Morrow said, I'm also possessed. <laughs> it is even dangerous when you have the one who doesn't want to have sex. Somebody or something is footing the bill. I'm going to show you some real facts. Is that okay? I'm careful because of the weight of what we are still going into. That's why I'm patient with you. So there are certain things we have to look at. And they will help us. Okay? So I want to start by showing you the differences between two, these two genders, the male and the female, they are not the same. 
It's like trying to compare Coke and tea. They are not the same. Somebody is saying, why is tea always served hot and Coke cold? They are supposed to be. If you, if, can you drink hot Coke? It's supposed to be served like that. And what we should understand is that our differences are not to separate us. They are to foster better relationship. Help us understand ourselves better. And when you fail to understand these differences, what is supposed to be a loving relationship will become a failed one. What is supposed to be a sweet relationship will become a failed one. Now, there's an assumption. There's an assumption. The assumption is that women are more complicated than men. I bet you, the one who will talk is not complex. The one who is quiet is the complicated one. A man is so complex that he doesn't mind playing along just for you to be happy. And he knows you are not touching his depth. I want us to erase that assumption that you can understand a man like you understand what is written plainly on paper. Men are very deep. Women are complicated because of the emotions with which they communicate at different times. But a man is deep. And anyways, in both cases, depending on what life has done to them. Are you listening? And are you following so there are, there are interesting um, differences. And these differences will help us understand how you and your partner differ. How you are two different individuals. So that you'll be able to see each other from better perspectives. Because once the perspective of, of you have about your spouse is affected, the marriage will go bad. In fact, one of the things the devil wants to achieve is to change your perspective. Is to change the way you see your spouse. He wants to orchestrate situations that will affect the way you perceive him or her for life. So you must understand. It is the differences that exist between the both individuals they were made so from the beginning. They were not designed to make you suffer. Your spouse is not trying to make you suffer. He's just different. She's just different. When a woman prepares late and tries to cross her T's and dot her eyes, she's not trying to stress you, even though it is difficult to believe. That's how she's wired. When a man does the things he's doing, and you are wondering, what is happening? It's not trying to stress you. That's how he's wired. I hope you are ready to learn the differences. Number one. So I pick some of this point from a book I'm going to recommend at the end of the teaching. But follow me for now. Number one. Women want to men to listen to them while men desire solution to their problems. Women want men to listen to them. While men want solution to their problems. So what this simply means is, the one who wants to be listened to will communicate more. And this is where it gets complex. Look up everybody. This is the fun part. When a woman is telling you about her challenge, hmm, never you assume that she does not have a solution. She just wants you to listen. In fact, you will enter one chance if you give solution before she's done. She perceives it as you trying to push her away. So, we have never finished. You have said this. And you are tired of me, Abby. That's her mindset. Because and the, the, the man can't understand that. Like, why are you sharing the problem if not for the solution? She's sharing the problem because she needs to offload. Hmm? And you are killing her if you don't give attention. See, 
So attention to a woman is like oxygen. And some men can't understand. Why are you telling me about the person frustrating you in your office? When you tell me that, what I want to tell you is, ah, this is how you should go about it. She's not in, she knows how to do it better than you. She knows how to undo the person and deal with the person. But she wants you to be here. So a man is like, okay, here, yeah, and then say, ah, here now, you're my husband. Ha. That's it. As she's talking it, she's finding answers. So when you counsel a woman, you don't need stress. By herself, she will say, I know what to do. Say, when to say, wow. You see, may you never laugh, mm, and wow. You don't mean it. I'm telling you. She's excited. When she's done, your food will be ready on time. That's her person. So, uh, you say, I mean, I can't pretend though. I can't, if, 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 if I can't give a solution, why am I listening? You can't have good home. To have good home, you would have to play along. See, go and learn acting skills. Babe, come and sit down, I want to talk to you. Wow. You are tired. You want to escape to your own reality. As she's talking, my God, you don't mean it. Say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. That's how the thing happened. Ah, ah. Look, you see, you have not added anything. But she's okay. Because she's not speaking for your addition. She's speaking for your attention. That's her wiring. But the man is not interested in communicating his problem. Particularly if he doesn't perceive that you have the solution now. What a man wants is solution. In fact, when a man has a problem, what he needs is to retire to himself. Figure it out before communicating. If you don't understand this, you will feel hurt and you will feel neglected because you feel, why are you not talking to me? He is not designed to talk until he has figured it out. And it is not a way of him telling you that you are not important. It is his design. He caves in to spring out. Okay? So when he has challenge, the first thing he needs is quietness. And that's why one of the best things you can give your husband is peace. Listen, if you understand how to leave him when he wants to be alone, you will get him to talk. Never tell a man, you are not talking to me. You will not talk. Leave him. Create the atmosphere. He will over talk. He will talk. And listen, this is where men get complicated. He will speak at the level of what he knows you can do. He has sized you up. He has weighed you. He knows what your depth can carry. He will not tell you more than that. If you want to have your husband fall like a pack of cats and be like babies in your hands, show depth. In the midst of him telling you sometimes what you are disappointed at, never show it. Each time you interrupt him, you reduce what is coming. That's his why. Giving you the expo. See, that thing doesn't work. Oh. Madam Shadjia, no before marriage. Oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you will, you will see the man will be there, but you have lost him. Kept by just the vows, and the woman you should fear the most is the one he has trusted to be telling his problems to. That's a dangerous person around your home. Why is it that out of all the girlfriends and all the people, not all the girlfriends, Christians don't keep many, don't keep girlfriends. All the many ladies around him. He chose you. What were you doing right? It's found safety. And when you understand that, you keep giving that thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I teaching good? 
<laughs> Are you learning something? Good. So men desire solutions to their problems. Oh, the world. Let me step up. Can tell you. When we were erecting this structure, did the first one that fell down and crashed. Not this solid, of course. When I got home that night, I went to lay down on the bed and I was just saying, thank you, Lord. My wife came, are you good? Said, I'm, I'm fine. Your food is ready. Oh, I have a live meeting shortly. I will eat, after, eat afterwards. I ate. No, I did my live meeting. Ate. We prayed. I locked myself up. Cried my eyes out. The following morning, I said, so babe, the building crashed yesterday. That's the way man communicates. He needs to clear that space so that when he speaks, he is not speaking with emotions. He's speaking fact. And when you see your man that is in that phase where he desires that quiet moment, give him. You will have a better man coming back to you each time you allow him. Is that clear? Good. Number two. In marriage, men are motivated when they feel useful. Women are inspired when they feel loved. Men are motivated when they feel useful. Women are inspired when they feel loved. So, we have to ask a question. Look up, everyone. What makes a woman feel loved? It is very easy to say, I love you. You are my whatever. The sugar in my tea, right? The pen in my notebook and all the stuffs. It's very easy to say. But you have to learn how. There's a way to love a woman. And a man must understand that there's a way to love a woman. So I want to teach on that. Is that okay now? Guys, are you with me? There's a way to what? Love it. The issue is that you are loving her your way. Not the way she wants to be loved. When you love a woman your way, you think you have done all you should do when you provide and protect. But things have changed. An average woman that is getting married now already has her own finance sorted. You understand what I'm saying? In fact, some of them already have their houses paying their rent. So you are not the one bringing her shelter. She's covered. You are not the one bringing her food. She earns more than you. It's not about the designers you want to buy for her. She buys for herself. So how can she be loved? And don't forget this. When she feels that love, she blossoms. She will be many things to you more than what you can imagine, regardless of whether she's introverted or extroverted. In fact, you must learn how to be skillful in bringing the child in her out. There is no dimension you desire to see in your spouse as a woman that is not there. You must be skillful in bringing it out. Create the atmosphere for her to blossom. Are you with me here? So one of the ways women feel loved is when they get attention. This is one word we will not leave. Attention, attention, attention. Now, let me show you what attention is and what attention is not. Attention is not the same thing as being present. Because a woman can know that you are present but yet missing. 
attention is not about being physically there. In fact, I predicted that in the next 10 years, one of the leading cause of divorce will be mobile phones. Because that's the virtual world many people just escape into. So for the woman, the, the man believes that, I mean, you said whenever I close from work, I should be home on time. I close by 4. I'm here 5 o'clock. Lagos traffic or Abuja traffic, whatever it is, Ibadan traffic. I am here. For her, it is not about being here in the house. And you are in your own world. It is being here with me, not in the house alone. It is not being at home. It is being with me. Because sometimes being at home and not being with her is worse than when you are not around. You are around, but she does not have your attention. And she doesn't feel loved. And men, with men, a lot of assumption. One of the things you must know about women is that they don't like surprises in the sense that don't just pull anything on her. Ah, I have to quickly get somewhere now. 9.30. She doesn't like it. She has not planned that in her head. She has imagined still seeing you till you go to bed. So attention for a woman is not just the physical presence but the emotional synergy. The fact that there is a conversation that is heart to heart. Some of them have their own love language from act of service. Those people that have act of service as they are, <coughs> that one is work. That one it is not really nice. They like men that will sit with them in the kitchen as they are carrying this, is carrying that. And you, you are the kind of guy who never carried Tony's stick. You don't even know what they call it. She is not being rude. That is who she is. She grew up seeing the dad and the mom. They'll be just this one, this one. You, you see that in the parlor. You are pressing your phone. She's confused. He doesn't love me. See, understand her. Okay? Women love attention. It doesn't matter whether mommy Gio or mommy Eo, they love attention. They don't joke with it. Okay? But you must make sure that your lack of attention does not give them a lifestyle where they move on from you. It is dangerous when the woman is no longer asking for it. It is very bad. That home is already dying. She has made up her mind, this is why I marry. Something is severed already from the marriage. Women can move on, but they'll be around. When they stop asking for the things they are asking, they've concluded, you don't have the capacity to give me. Instead of frustrating myself, I'm okay. Okay? So, one of the ways you know your wife's love language is to check what she gives. The one who loves gifts will give gifts, except the stingy one. Because there, there are exceptions to these things. How do you say you like gifts? Every time he's doing birthdays, boxers you buy. Bad day is coming again. Plan of buying boxers. He's a wrestler. Number two, a woman feels loved when she's covered, protected, security, good sense of security, financial security, emotional security. And let me warn at this point anytime you have misunderstanding listen to these men be careful of the things you say never say anything that threatens our security statement like it was my fault i married you i wish we never married in the first place one very serious thing that also threatens security is comparison you look at so and so and so person. When you compare your spouse with another woman, she believes you are in love with that person. And what you do is that you set her on the path of insecurity. You bring out a monster out of her that should not be there. Women want security. The fact that I've married a man that regardless of my shenanigans, they will tell you, women know too that they have problems. They will, see, that's why, check what they are saying. 
when they are celebrating their men that I know I have problem but regardless of my problem he loved me the same way she knows the father that gave birth to her did not throw her out of the house for not cooking did not break her head are you not my father that's what she's thinking when she begins to talk with her biological father more than she talks to you it's bad you are not doing your duty she feels safer with him you must understand security is a lot for a woman the fact that she knows he won't throw me away am i speaking your heart and the woman perceives the man who threatens the foundation of the home when he's angry as a wimp like he's a child and i perceive such a man as that too every conflict will end what we do to ourselves will remain every conflict will end when it comes to security emotional security financial security spiritual security which is your priest duty the fact that she knows she has a man who will intercede for her the man who will pray for her the man who will guide her that's why it looks like some women respect their pastors more because a woman wants to feel secure she wants to be led by a trusted body she actually wants to be led women wants to be led more than you can imagine if you rise up to becoming the leader she will submit she wants to be led she does not want to be led astray she wants to be led the right path that's our design that's our wiring that's the way she grew up she loves leadership and the way to get her to submit is not through threat it is by becoming one through patience serious patience in the days that they themselves will tell you i don't understand myself but please just bear with me understand me okay I, i'm going through something i don't understand myself but just understand me a real man must have the depth of emotional maturity you can't be threatened by every wind you must be able to carry her and carry the home because sometimes it just doesn't make sense what either of them do and you must understand the male man is is the foundation is the foundation and what is very what is much what is most important about foundation is the strength foundation does not have to be fine it has to be strong what makes a building solid is the fact that the foundation is strong so she wants a strong man women are attracted to strong leaders that's the fact women are attracted to leadership it is not a demonic thing it's a wiring and that's why you must understand when you are a man who has a vision that she can trust even when you don't have money she will follow you you threaten her when there's no money and there's no vision and you can't blame her for living and you must understand having a strong vision that you are passionate about is a form of security for her the fact that she knows i can stake my life around what he's doing i want to help him now there is something to help him do and when she feels her space as the one who is helping she feels loved you have some things doing she's the one who, who is doing everything you are holding her by the hands as you are doing the things you are doing as your trophy <laughs> she feels loved when you begin to make her take back seat you are communicating the fact that you have a replacement and that's not good that's not good she wants to support your vision but make it clear and because she wants you to communicate 
communicate the vision in a way that she understands. She will carry it more than you. The same woman you think has abandoned your vision is because you are not talking and they are not angels to know what is your mind. If you are rerouting, communicate. Don't say at least you can see me. She's not. She wants to hear it. So when you are a man of vision, one who is pursuing what you are pursuing, it is clear with your energy, it is clear with your pursuit, it is clear with your dedication that this is it, a woman will stake her life around you. And many men don't understand this. So we try to paint women as materialistic because well, if you ask the woman, she will tell you, I'm not, I, honestly, I can't see any vision here. And when there's no vision, a woman submits to a man who doesn't have vision, there's no purpose there. She will be abused. She will be abused. So one of the things you want to check for in a man is, what vision am I building with you? Then you ask yourself, am I wired for this? Am I wired for this? When you allow your woman to help you, she feels loved. The fact that she knows everything that is going on, she's communicating, you guys are talking, we go about it this way. We. Oh, yes, that's it. But if you keep communicating the fact that she's not important, you will do it alone and you will fail. Now, many men don't trust their women. You trust somebody else, forgetting the fact that the fellow is functioning because you are giving the person the privilege to function. And you are not extending the same privilege to her, and you wonder why she's underperforming. How do you give somebody else more opportunity to help you more than your wife? Don't you know that whoever helps you gets a space in your heart? You are not necessarily promiscuous. You just found for yourself another helper. And when you do that, the image of your wife begins to reduce and that person becomes enhanced. Attention breeds affection. Be careful who you give it to. So you must understand this. When you are hard working, when you are pursuing what you are, when you are stable, that you see that word stable, all that word. When you are stable, you are not saying this today, tomorrow, that one tomorrow. Then she, when you are stable, a woman feels secure. Even when she's praising you and you are not stable, she's praising you for your ego. A woman can praise you for your ego, but she wish you were a better man. It is not everything she's saying on your birthday that is true. And she knows she's lying. But she knows your ego needs it. As a matter of fact, if your wife is obligated to post you every time to describe the kind of man you are, it's because she has noticed you have low self-esteem. She will not feel the need to if she doesn't know you feed on it. That's the reason. That's the reason she's doing what she, Because she knows you are down. Let's pump the ego. I think I touched something there. <laughs> mm. Quote me anywhere. And women, you know I'm telling you the truth. Have you had to say things about someone because he desires it, not because he has earned it? Many women are obligated to first praise him before they talk because it is the right thing to do. We act to the gallery. But is he really who you say he is? If you want honor, to come naturally from her, give her security and lead her well. 
if you're a man with varying decisions, very, very, very decisions, our security is threatened. And she's confused. And many women are quiet about the things they should say because they are protecting the ego of the men. They are protecting the guy. They don't want to bruise his ego. And she has to endure many things. Many women will tell you they are more quiet about the things that you say than they are talking. Just try to save the home. I'm going to get there tonight, but let me continue. I don't want to go ahead of myself. Let me give you one, just one secret. How do you lead a woman who is a born leader? How do you lead a woman who is a born leader? One who is choleric, director of affairs. She knows what she's doing. She's so independent, she almost doesn't need your leadership. Number one thing you must get right around her, be secure. Once her growth is not threatening you, she will submit. <laughs> and real men allow their wives fly. Real men allow their wives fly. You want to equip her. Right? You want to help her get better. You want to help her to have money. Help her make money. You are not threatened by what she is making. You want to encourage her to do more. You want to give her wings to fly. It is to your own gain when you have a woman who is flying by your side. It's your own gain. I heard Mrs. Ibuka Oshika sharing that the name Awoshika is not her name, it's the husband's name. So whatever it is God is doing with us, he's doing around organizations, who gets his name? Is enhanced. Many men have trust issues. They can't trust real money in the hands of the woman because she has shown signs. Or they have seen things. She has spoken rudely. Certain days that certain things touch her hands. And that's why I say a man is complicated. He has marked it, but he didn't talk. Go and check my comment section online. Apart from the fact that some girls were bashing me, some boys too were bashing me. They say, how do you say you should confide in a woman? They will rubbish you. That's the impression they have of you. Because you would rather win an argument than to win your home. And when you want to win an argument, you use everything and anything against him. Including the things he had to die to tell you. Do you know what it means for a man to open up? It is one of the greatest miracles in this world. Because men are naturally sealed. You have him when he's open. Not when he's buying shawarma. You have him when he is vulnerable. Delilah has certain things you must learn from her. How was she able to get something? To talk. Even if he was a foolish, a foolish guy, he's still more close than a wise woman. Because naturally he's close. But she put the head on the laps. Can your lap still accommodate the head of your husband? Or is Shandarama, Shandarama, Bessele, Shakuri, Kuri. Be careful. Nine PM. Ah, running apron, cooking. Ten PM. 10.30. Akumama. Come on. Oh, 
What is your problem? We are, see, there's a way you can claim to be a prayer warrior and make the person who really pray look like he doesn't pray. Because you are, you are making somebody suffer. And that is not Christianity, it is wickedness. When he meets you, Ayakaya, Elimahaya, I you see that I you are going to flog you to write more He's trying to touch you, say, Can we pray? Come. Borrow me your head for a second. See, we are gathering together unto the unto. And he's wondering, who did I marry? <laughs> Do you even have an idea on how to work on your attractiveness? Or it is one of those things you consider carnal? And carnal girls are getting good boys. Because good girls are lost in their naivety. Not touched with the reality. Do you know? I'm saying you don't have an idea of who the man beside you is. He knows more than he's saying. And he's just wondering. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't use your own spirituality to humiliate your husband. Don't. Or to humiliate your wife. Don't. But, in all honesty, many men don't trust their spouses. They can't trust them with their vulnerability. When you want to get a man, stop looking for surface things. Look for his vulnerability. You are trying to Get him to be vulnerable with you. That is when you have him. That is where the work is. And to achieve that, there's got to be peace. Like a river. There's got to be a lot of understanding. And the guys... Why would you marry a girl you don't love, you don't trust? You married her, but you trust your mom. Marry your mom. You are trying to run her mental. When you are not trusting him, you are already opening the door for the devil to come in. And he will deceive you. Now, let me say this to you. One of the ways to build trust is to become better friends. If you pray together, you will trust her. If you study together, you will trust each other. And most times, the problem is that both of you came into that home with your own baggages. And you have refused to change your perspective. And it affects everything. And sometimes what is now causing problem is the day you try to go out of your way to talk to him the way you felt, not the way he should be talked to. Now the good thing you were trying to do has achieved wrong result. Be skeptical. I wish I can stay here all night. That if you want to get the depth of your man, quit interrupting him. Once he starts, is building. It will get to a point it will break open. And that's it. That's what we want to achieve all the time. Are you learning something? Are you sure? Are you sure you are learning something? Now, listen, men are motivated when they feel useful. Now, hold on. 
Some of you men may not even know this yet. But you want to understand this and get this now. One thing you want to keep communicating to the man in your life is that there's no replacement for him. You want to communicate the importance of his presence. You want to show him what his absence does negatively. That tells him that his presence is so important. There is a way not to be strong around a man. When you are strong that way, he assumes that he's not needed after all. He assumes that you don't need him. I know you are a strong woman. You are an independent woman. You don't have feelings. Or do you? Or you must learn to communicate it. You see, listen, 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 listen. Don't make the mistake of saying, I'm not the expressive type. For the sake of your marriage, both male and female, be the expressive type. If you feel it, say it. Communicate it. Intentionally, intentionally, tell her you love her. Don't wait till you feel it. That's why it's a commitment. Intentionally, communicate it. Uh, you know, there are certain things I'm still coming out of my shell. Life is not patient. What are you still doing inside the shell? Break the shell. Come out of your shell. This is your husband. Come out of the shell. What's inside the shell? It's empty. You have it in your head, but you are not doing it. Who are you? See, it's just in my mind. You know, I'm still trying to... No. Have you seen two people who are dating, who are committing sin and touching each other, kissing, fondling themselves and doing all those things? They don't have a problem with expression. The same professionals who are doing it when they were not married, we now have a problem with it in marriage. It is not expression they have a problem with. It is commitment. It is what? The same woman you couldn't wait to kiss. Now... She's been here for two years. You can't remember the last time you kissed your wife. Your problem is commitment. Why is that the same appetite that you had before marriage suddenly dies when you are married? Something within you loves the one that dishonors God. You have to re-engineer your mind. You must tell yourself before you marry, this woman will satisfy me all my life. I am satisfied with my own well. I'm not digging for anything elsewhere. This is it. This is all that God has to offer and I'm okay with it. Tell yourself. When you tell yourself, watch, is your heart struggling with that fact? If it is struggling with it, that's a sign that you are prone to adultery. So you have to re-engineer your mind through the word. But not just through the word alone. By communicating the affection to your wife. Lavish it till she manifests it. That both of you become inseparable. If you are not communicating the affection, you are leaving the door for adultery. Because you are an emotional being. And that thing will want to flow. Communicate it to your wife. Let me share a story with you. Careful. Somebody came to report a matter years back, of course. I mean, years, years back. To me. Say his wife ate him. Ha. I said, How will your wife eat you? Say, wife ate him. Ha. It was a serious one. Say, so what happened? So I made him narrate the whole story. He had described to the girl 
How that when we get married, wedding night. Ah! <laughs> wedding night. Five seconds. Gone. She looked at him. And she felt disdain. Look at you. <laughs> I'm careful. Anytime she is cooking and she passed, she looked at him and he is. What he was getting is that I'm irritating her. What she's saying is that you abandoned a woman this full, full package like this. That's what she's saying. That's why she's easy. When she is, I say, go and meet her. Eat the bomb bomb. Say, do you used to do that? He said, no, or there. Go and do it. I'm talking to guys, I'm very real. I don't joke, I'm very real. <laughs> I said, So when she's in the kitchen, what do you say? She's there, she's cooking. I'm busy. Ah, why would she not ease? I said, If I leave my house, <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> so he was getting the vibe that she hates me. Meanwhile, she's saying, Am I not your own? She's cooking. She's wearing bomb shorts. Passing where she should not pass. She does not have anything doing. She will just pass. And pass again. And she is. She's saying, follow me. You need to be aware. This naivety is not King James that called this, caused this one. It's foolishness. That's why some good girls love bad boys because they know what to do. But you, you are lost in the book of Habakkuk. I, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what should I do? Am I the one that will be teaching you? Tell the man beside you, better wake up. Tell the man, you better wake up. So I told him, go back home. When she pass and is go and grab her. I won't tell you what I said. Let me tell you, I stand before God. From that moment, she changed his name to Kabiesi. <laughs> My king. From so RBS you huh? Do you know what KBC means? Igwe, the king. Ah. So men are lost, they are not aware. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? You say what did I teach him? Come and pay me. But meanwhile, what was the guy getting that each time she is? You see, when a girl walk and greet five guys, and there's a sixth one, and she's not greeting that one, she likes him. She likes him. The one that she's saying, bestie, bestie, that's not the threat. The real threat is that one that she's that is the guy. I've been around for a while. That's the guy. So you are feeling threatened, and that guy, she greets everybody. She just says, She like you. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you chat her up, she's giving you one word answer. She's saying push. Meanwhile, this thing to us, part B. Because uh -huh. you must know when not to push. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I wish I can dwell more on that. So, sometimes what she's saying is not really what she's saying. What she's saying is not really what she's saying. And we must train our boys to understand communications of a woman. Unfortunately, religion has made it so that women cannot tell the husbands that is depriving them of sex. Because they are not friends. They are just husband and wives. I'm going to find time and enter some matters. Okay? But let me just move on. Are you still with me? Are you sure you are getting blessed? Are you sure you are getting blessed? All right. That girl that is always avoiding eye contact likes you. <laughs> oh, like her. There's something your eye is doing to her. And whenever you have to talk one on one, she finds one boldness from someone. I say, eh? She's trying to be strong. She's shaking inside. Be a man. Stand. How are you doing? Eyeball to eyeball. Sustain the conversation. Make it linger. Know how to keep her waiting without knowing she's waiting. Meaningful talks. She will keep seat for you. You see that what I'm saying, they know what I'm saying. Now, quickly, I want to begin to now eat the second part of this teaching. We are getting into some very crucial part now. When the Bible says submit to your husband, you must understand that submitting to him also means to honor him. It means to honor him. Now, there are problems in different families because the woman does not understand what the man calls honor. What honor is to you is not what honor is to him. You must understand what honor is to him. You, I, I, I mean, I prepared your food. It's served on the table. If you like, go and eat. That's not honor to him. What honor is to the man? And you must understand this. You see, it is to your own good that you honor your man. It is to your own good that you honor your man. You don't want to have a broken man beside you. Somebody is saying, hey, don't, don't put that on women. Women are not the ones. They, some of them come in broken. I'm going, to, I'm going to teach about that tonight. Men who come in. Okay? But don't, life is already hard. And he's trying to fight many battles on different sides. The least you can make happen is to give him a home where he is the king. What you want to achieve in your home is to establish a setting where it is clear to all there is a king in this house. And honor means preference. Honor is that he is preferred is preferred honor is preference that's the idea of honor you crown your own king I would have loved to say a few things in the context of our African setting not a doctrinal persuasion or a doctrine in the context of our African setting. And that's a disclaimer. How is he served when it's time to eat? Do you serve him based on your mood? 
some women are still not aware in this century that it is it is actually inhuman to pour soup on top of rice. Wow, wants it. Wow. Honor can be learned. I shared the story with you. I mean, myself and my wife got married. One time she just went to the market. You see, honor is one thing you can't give yourself. You have to be given. I can respect myself by behaving right. But honor must come from outside to me. Nobody crowns himself king. He is crowned king. You must understand. Listen to what I'm saying. To be thinking otherwise is to have a home that is full of chaos. Because people are quick to react. Is he the kind of man that he is? Is he the kind of man I will honor? As long as he is your husband, the Bible commands you to honor him. And to honor him is to create an establishment where his kingship is known and felt. I can't bring the reality of my home here. But I've been to many homes and I know that they are not going to have peace with the kind of structure I'm seeing. Because somehow the woman seemed to have concluded that this is what he deserves. And that's what he's going to get. Honor is exemption. You are not all others. You are different. Honor is communication of difference. We must understand that. Somebody saying, why is the man to show honor the wife? Shut up. Learn yours first. Because when people are always talking back, it means you are listening to respond. And that's already a problem. You are not listening to learn. Listen. See, listen first. Listen and get your part right. Get it right. If you miss the character, to enthrone your own king in your house, you will have children who are not princes and princesses. They will be dysfunctional. They will be dysfunctional. And many, listen to what I'm saying, African homes, in this regard, they are largely abusive. They abuse the life of the children. The way a man understands honor is that he is crowned different. The plate I used to eat is different. The spoon I used to eat is different. They are all different. If you see it, you know this is for this person. Nobody uses the type. And that's why when I'm away from home, I struggle to cope with eating from anybody's hands. Because in all honesty, I know you will honor me when I come, you try, but you can't honor me like my wife. You can't beat the record. You can't beat the record. And each time she does it, I vow to defend her with my life. The king in me is steered. How do you have a better plate for visitors that you're not using for your king? Something is wrong with you. Your best plate, your best cutleries, your best spoon, they are for special guests. This guy is not special. That's your king! Crown him! It's your duty to crown him. Because when you keep washing him down, when you keep you will have a man who is broken by you. He will not perform at his peak, at his peak. He is defeated in his mind. He sees the way you treat him. He can't go out there and conquer. You will be broke. You will be broke. Because he's a 
still is killed every day. When you want to talk anywhere, you struggle to find good things to say about your husband. Do you know that when you want to celebrate a man, it's not enough to say you are the apple in my tea. He wants to hear specifics that he has done in your life. And he will not tell you when he's not getting it. Except he's really open. And he's wondering, apart from being sugar and tea, cockroach in this, am I not more? Have I not been a blessing to you? Am I not teaching you? Why did you forget? Anytime you always forget the good things to say, when it's time to honor your husband, that's the spirit of disrespect. It's a wrong spirit. But when you want to complain, you remember every bad thing he has done. Honor your man. I, I doubt the possibility. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm honest to you. Everywhere I go to minister, I struggle with the setting. In fact, recently we had to decide if I have to minister for anybody, don't book a hotel for me, don't cook for me, I will book my hotel and I will take care of myself. I will bless you and get out. Because there is a standard already achieved in my house. Everyone else honors him but you. He is known, his value is known everywhere else except by you. Because you are a complainer, not him. Seeing the things he's not doing right. You will not have a good man like that. See the king in him, understand that you are a prophet, call it out. Very important. That's the way a man understands honor. That's the way he sees it. That is preferred. That is different. Do you know that you don't honor a person at your level? You honor the person at his level. The worst statement I hear from people is when I tell them, you don't honor me. And you tell me, you honor me. You are saying... This is who you are. And that's what I give you is what you deserve. I am saying I am more. When you want to honor a person, you need a revelation of them before you can do it well. If not, you can't do it well. If you are not prepared... To so honor a person, don't marry the person. Raise the bar of honor to such a level that nobody else can meet up, including his mother. Raise the bar. Don't be naive. Apart from rice and beans, do you have any other idea of what to cook? If it's not a bar, it's a mala. Then you are done. Run out of idea. You treat him anyhow. You drop his food with an attitude. You don't even tell him. You expect him to know your food is there. Do you know your food can be sweet and yet he can't eat it? Because the character stinks. And that's not a yardstick to reject your wife's food. Because a real man does not function by just mere emotions. You see beyond all that. Why do you want to go to bed with hunger? Because you want to prove a point. You are now sneaking out around 2 a.m. to drink cornflakes. Why must you suffer yourself? Just swallow the pride. And eat. You don't force things on kings. You know the reason why many women don't know how to honor their husbands? They didn't see their moms doing the same. Let me share a story with you. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. This is where it gets very serious, okay? Is that okay? 
Because I'm going to how children perceive love. Then I'm going to touch parenting. This is where we are going to have issues. One time, a young lady came, came from a very funny home. I mean, you, you didn't choose where you were born, so it's not your fault. But the mom and the dad had issues so much so that the way the mother knows to deal with the man is to mix food that is already decomposing with new ones. Soup that is decomposing, she will add some ingredients and she's found that if she had more pepper, it will not taste the sourness. And she will add some new ones and open it when she's warming it so the smell can go out. And she will serve him and wash it. And many times when the mother is doing it, she will be in the kitchen gisting with her. I told her, don't marry like this. You have seen it. You are likely going to repeat it. Because something will tell you when a man is like this, that's how to respond. Many parents destroyed their own children's homes because they don't know how children perceive love. The way a child perceives love is sacrifice. It's not the useless stories we hear. It is who is making sacrifices that shows that this is the mother. Let me show you a story. One of the stories about Solomon or one of the events in the life of Solomon that made Solomon so popular, his, his fame went abroad when that happened, was when an harlot slept on her own child and went to pick the child of her friend that they gave birth around the same time and drop her own dead child around that one. And in the morning, they both complained, yeah, no, this is not my child, I said, that's my child. They went to the palace. The king commanded one of his swordsmen, take your sword and divide the child into two. It was the mother of the child who was willing to sacrifice ownership for survival. Listen to this. As you begin to grow older, you must learn that you have more than just your husband or your wife to love. Now you have children to love. And what will communicate love to them is that in your decisions, they can see sacrifices, things that are legitimate that you have to forego so they can have a good life. So it is woke to the generation that if a man is stressing you, leave the house for him. I'm not talking about the case of domestic violence now. I, 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 if it's, it is woke to be a baby mama. I can't be submitted under any man. Then you will raise children without fathers in their life because you lived for you. You did what you did for you, not for them. And they grow up lacking the vital part a man supplies. One party can't bring what God designed the both party to bring. And you must understand that. That as you are maturing, you start learning not to live for you alone. Because it is not about you alone. You will have to make decisions considering your children. That when I insult his personality or insult her personality, do I want my daughter to be dragged like this? You must learn to begin to make decisions. To stop eating alone. Start becoming responsible. Start thinking about the fact that somebody is going to come out from your loins. That your decisions directly affect who they become. Some mothers and fathers have children who are into Yahoo or what we call internet fraud. And they will take the children's name to prophets to pray for the child. That's not sacrifice for the child. That is for their own belly. 
She doesn't love the child. She just wants to survive. Because many people have not learned to understand what love is. When a woman has a child, and she would rather take the child out in the sun at Oshodi, begging with the children, using them to draw compassion. When she could have learned tailoring or learned something, give them a better life. That is not mother's love. That is wickedness. And where I'm going is, many things about the setting of the African home is bad. It is abusive, it is dysfunctional, and it has raised dysfunctional men and women. It has raised dysfunctional men and women. You don't complain in this house because you heard it from a dysfunctional father. Children don't dare to question things because you were from a place that is broken. You are not raising zombies. And in failure to communicate, many girls have been raped under the noses of their parents. They can't talk because in African homes we raise zombies who can't talk. And you have learned the same thing. Your way, the way you know how to communicate leadership is that you, 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 you shut people up and they can't speak their minds. And these things follow us as pastors. Many pastors are abusive because they are from abusive backgrounds. And when I mean abusive, I mean they will abuse your essence. It is not just fathers who don't know how to hug and say, I love you. I know what it took for me to learn it as a pastor. I had to go on a personal decision, a personal journey to learn to be soft. That I can hug any of my pastors. Sometimes I watch how I struggle to do it and I know that something is spoiled within me. This is not the definition of a man. Don't accept yourself the way you are. Go on a journey to heal and be soft and release that love. You will have it. It is that dysfunctionality that has closed that place. And we must understand that. Start learning to make decisions that favors your children. Begin from now by marrying a good person. Not for yourself, but for them also. We have to understand that. Children essentially understand love by looking at the sacrifices you make for them. So anybody who doesn't understand sacrifice should not attempt parenting. It's a journey of compromise, of sacrifices, where you have to withhold certain things and not respond in certain ways because your daughter is watching. And sometimes... I need to say this. Many of you are broken bad, badly, and you are battered. Because your parents used you as confident. You are not designed to be their confident. You are a child. You began to meditate over matters that you are not designed to meditate over. And you became a breadwinner too soon. It's because there's poverty in the house. At the time you should be building yours, you're already trying to sponsor three siblings in school. It is the dysfunctionality of the African homes. And at the end of the day, parents are not to be blamed. You take the responsibility. Don't repeat the same pattern of abuse. Don't tell yourself that what we call onjomo. You are in your 40s as a woman. 
your colleagues at that age are working in different companies. It's the time to help your children stand their ground, not to milk them. And if that's the kind of background you have, you must make a vow that I will break this pattern of reproach. Because many of you are failing in the things you are doing because you are already carrying more than what you should carry at this age. You are actually a young person. You know too much than you should know. Your mom already told you about their sexual life. Your daddy has this, your daddy has done that. And she didn't know that each time she's talking about that, she's destroying your perspective about men. And many of them are not even expecting you to have a better home. They just want to survive. And what should be a place of purpose? I become a battleground of survival. Because there's so much problem in the house. So it's survival of the fittest. There is a wrong pattern in the African setting, in Nigerian homes, in African homes that needs to be broken. You must vow. It ends with me. It goes no further. I will have a home where my wife and children, we are free with each other. We sit around the table to gist and laugh where a father and the son can play PS and laugh with each other. When you are 50, there's nothing wrong in your 60s for you to say, my son, take 100 million, hurt your business, pay me later. Or you prefer to be pursuing about for 10,000. Because that's the way you understand prayer. Because that's what you got. Somebody has to make the decision, the cause, the pattern of lack, depravity, emotional pain, damage, ends with me. You are not about to make your children your confidant. As your leaders, pray to God. Leave them to leave their space. They should not know too much already. Many of them have many and many parents don't know their children. Everyone else know them except the parents. They just give birth to them and pay school fees. Do you know knowing your child goes beyond school fees? Do you know what this child's future is? That church that that child does not want to stop going. Do you know the reason why this child doesn't want to stop going to that church? What do they provide that is missing at home? You don't just find that. You seek to know. And what many parents are fighting is the destiny of the child. Many of us fought battles to do what we are doing today. Parents don't know their children. They are busy trying to survive. You've got to break that pattern. We are not teaching this for fun. You know what you went through. Must your child go through the same? Because already you are absent-minded. Just trying to survive your life. How many of you here can boast that your parent really knows you? They know what you are doing now with your life. Some of you preach. They've never heard your message before. They wonder, what is he preaching? They don't even know the name of the ministry. The problems you face. You can't even talk on phone more than five minutes. And I'm telling you, I, I came from a setting where God blessed me with a father. And I saw what that did to me in making me a man. If a man misses that part, there is a need for fathering. And I'm just being honest with you. I've shown you how to love your husband, how to love your wife. Start preparing yourself for the destinies that will come from your loins. Detach yourself from the dysfunctionality of your background. Sometimes the only way to be a blessing to your family is to first run away. Because you cannot solve a problem you are a part of. Survive first. 
Every time you receive call, so so and so is beating the wife again. So so and so is beating the wife again. This one has packed out of yours. You are in the midst of people, and you are trying to be civilized, but it looks like the background calls you back. Your mommy has done this again. Your daddy has done this again. And when they drop the call, they feel they have released the burden on who. You release your body, this person begins his or her battle. That's not the way to love a child. To love a child most times is that you even spare the child from certain information and certain knowledge because they are not needed at that age. And there are things children should never know. It is not in their place to know. Am I teaching you? Some of you don't know how to heal from such setting. I've told you number one, journey far. And it's a conscious decision you have to make because for Abraham to become a great nation, he has to leave his father's house. You cannot be addicted to dysfunctionality. Jennifer, before it cost you your essence. Because if they begin to bring that baggage to interfere in your marriage, they will create theirs. There are types of parents that must never have your ears in your marriage. Because they will speak their fears and everything into it and that one becomes bad it is not your fault it's the reality you met on ground what should you do journey far find God and learn in a neutral atmosphere learn something else apart from what you grew up seeing and that's why I pleaded with you you see you need to have friends who know how to treat their spouses more than the things you have learned elsewhere. You see, those friends you have that are always beating their wife, they will make your home go bad. Counsel them, draw back. Because each time they beat themselves, they insult them, they, do, they are telling you it is possible. And the reason why you especially have to draw back is because of the kind of home you are coming from. You have the tendency of doing worse. It is God who is helping you. Now they are mirroring it. Look for the one who knows how to treat the husband and the one who knows how to treat the wife. Get close to them and learn. You see that this guy is always checking for clothes for the wife, always checking for better things for her. Learn from that one. Be close to those who are getting it right. Those who are better than you. Why? Because a new lineage is forming and you cannot form it from the ruins of that dysfunctionality. Some of you feel I may never know how to treat a woman because you have not seen it. Make sure you see it. Make sure you hang around those who are doing it. It goes beyond wearing the same clothes. It goes beyond wearing the same clothes. If you really want to have a home that is heaven on earth, you need inspirations around you of how to love, how to be tender, how to care, how to be, listen, you need inspirations of integrity, how to be faithful as a man. Your sons deserve a model that shows that it is possible to live with one woman. And each time you have the urge to do something else beyond your wife, tell yourself, my sons deserve the model to know that one woman is enough for a lifetime. Don't get into adultery 
Because once you start it runs in families, somebody must break the pattern. Your son deserves to have a model that shows that the mother is enough. The girls deserve to have a model that shows that she can be enough for her husband. Some of you are struggling with your emotions. They are all over the place. Because you grew from homes where you've seen all over many things. Somebody has to break the cycle. Is it you or should God wait for your children? Or will they have to fight this same battle and maybe they will fail also? Once you break it, they have neutral grounds to commence from. Bear the bonds and all that, but break it. And somebody has to cry tonight that adultery will not flow through me. Infidelity, dysfunctionality, it ends. This is where it ends. This is where it stops. This is where everything ends. The pattern of pain and having men who are broken and girls who are battered. This is where it ends. It goes no further. You have to understand that the battle you are fighting is not for you alone. Some children will continue from where you stop. You have to understand that the hurt you feel to misbehave, to disappoint, to break the key, to break the code, it is because the devil wants you to eat the forbidden fruit so that your seed can be corrupted. But somebody has to cry. The pattern of shame, of pain, and dysfunctionality, it goes no further. 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 It hangs here and now. I refuse to sell off. I understand that the hurt I feel. The men who have gone ahead of me failed at it. I refuse to compromise. The future is bright. I will not sell out. I refuse to be another failed vessel. I understand the trick. The playbook of the devil is exposed. It goes no further. In Jesus, mighty name we're praying. Sit down for a moment. One of the ways to make sacrifices for your children, born or unborn, is to become a noble pattern. That I can tell my sons and daughters that I began to pastor before I got married and I did not touch any of God's children. I've never defiled anyone and they say it is possible. It is easy to misbehave in a place where there's pattern. It doesn't matter the mistake you have made in the past. The pattern can end. The pattern can end. In some places, pattern of pregnancy outside marriage and you wonder why in your relationship you can't almost keep hands off each other. The same thing you are bowing to, they all bowed to it and failed. Who is going to pass the test? Who is going to end it? Who is ready to pay the price? Who can God find that he can commence a new lineage from? So when we have to live a life of integrity, it goes beyond me. Do you think I don't have feelings? You do, I, my man. I tell myself, 
it is beyond me that if any of my sons physically uh, physical sons or spiritual sons want to misbehave they can nobly ask themselves who do i want to resemble god forbid they can't say he's doing it too or they are saying he's doing it too because your integrity is going to preserve a generation and that's why you have to pay the price Your nobility, your fidelity is going to preserve. It goes beyond you. When Esau was eating the plate of porridge, he was quenching his afternoon hunger. But he was depriving all the seeds in his loins. And the seed in the loins of his loins, loins. And there is something they will not become because one person ate something. You must do better. You must do better. Let me say this to you. The pattern you grew from is going to come looking for you. But you must stand your ground. It is warfare. When that day comes, you must be ready to get up and fight. The pattern of immorality that you so hate that you met on ground is going to come knocking at your doors and the devil will give you justifiable reason why you should do it but you must remember they all did it and it, they became what they became I won't regardless of how good it seemed to present itself to me it is warfare everything you hate is going to come lost in after you I'm telling you in case no one has told you. When that day comes, you must be ready to fight. I see people everywhere on social media saying their parents are this, their parents are that. There is high chance their children will say the same thing about them because the same situation is going to come haunting after them. And many already are failing at it. So you must master the art of war. Jesus said, the prince of this world came to me and found nothing of his in me. You know, listen. One day the devil came for me. And I'm telling you, he's going to come for you. And I had to subject myself to prayer, fasting, and tears. I will, you may not hear a pastor tell you this, I will not sell out. I will rather die. And that day, I discovered that when the battle becomes fierce, the devil begins to over, to check the areas you once failed. Those are the weak links for you to fail again. Don't create a system where the devil does not have to search far to see how he can get you to fail. If you feel I don't get tempted, I'm telling you I get tempted. Sometimes the devil just want to call your attention. You must speak like Job. I have made covenant with my eyes. Greatness is better than adultery. I choose greatness. Greatness is better than the pleasure of a moment. The men we honor today, we honor them because they stood their ground. Through whatever pains they went through, they communicated a model that it is possible. Will there be scarcity of model because you are selling out? Or selling off. And that's why I say it's a warfare. The pressure is not you. It is coming for your seeds. If I ask you to pray, will you pray? Let me give you a few minutes. I want to give you the next couple of minutes. 
Pick a spot, guys. Don't get used to being in the confines of chair. You have things to deal with that others may not understand, so leave them. It goes beyond just trying to have a home for the fun of it. It is actually a new lineage that God is forming. It is not for the fun of it. And that's why from Sunday I begin to teach on how to heal from dysfunctional backgrounds. And how to come out without spot like you never came out of such system. So it is not just a new family. It is a new generation. It is a new lineage. It is a new thing. God is trying to bara. He's trying to do what the type does not exist in your lineage. He's starting something new. And that's why the battle is fierce. My time is up. Can you just cry to God and say, help me, I'm ready. I'm available to be used by you. Help me. Help me. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. To all of you who have ever had to think of how to tell your spouse the kind of home you came from, where you have had to give them orientation before they visit your house because anything can happen, where you have had to panic around your wedding period, not knowing who may pull some surprises, more reason why you must decide. It goes no further. It ends here. It ends with me. A new generation will call me blessed because someone decided it ends with me. Do we have people like that in the house tonight? Sometimes our church settings are absent. In, we are not in touch with these realities. And I've said I've read many Christian books on relationship. None of them really put in perspective that there are people coming from dysfunctional backgrounds. And guess what? They are more than 70%. Thank God for the American books. But there's something the devil is trying to do in Africa. It's doing everywhere. But there are realities that are unique to this place. I decree over all of you. You will not be a failed lineage. Yeah. Any and every form of pain, dysfunctionality, abuse that has flowed through your lineage, any form of perversion, any form of sin that has swallowed mighty men over your life it goes no further from you and in you God will find a vessel worthy of a new lineage you will not stop where they stopped you will not fail where they failed you will not make their mistakes it is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience.